Hi, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a brick pattern in Adobe Photoshop. A lot of times when I create patterns, I um, start from a square, um, but in this case, brick is a little bit more of a rectangle. So I am going to use the help of uh, grids to uh, set up this pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and click on new file here. And for this, I'm going to start with the dimensions of digital scrapbook paper because um, a lot of times I want my uh, patterns to be seamless for this file size. So we're looking at 3600 pixels by 3600 pixels. I'm going to deselect artboards for this one. And then I like to work with a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. And then color mode is RGB color, background content set to transparent. And then just go ahead and click on create. To help plan the actual size of my pattern swatch, I'm going to use grid. So I'm going to go to view guides, new guide layout. And for this one, I'm going to do four columns and then I'm going to set my rows to eight. That way we get more of that rectangle fill here. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. With the marquee tool um, that is M on the keyboard, I'm going to uh, just use those guides to help me uh, draw out a rectangle here. And then I'm gonna fill those pixels with my foreground color, which is currently set to black. Uh, to do that for Mac, you're gonna go Alt Delete or Alt Backspace for a PC here. And then we have those pixels filled, so I'm gonna go ahead and deselect Command or Control D here, and we have our rectangle. With this rectangle, I'm going to go ahead and convert it to a smart object. So I'm going to go right click, convert to smart object. I'll double click in here and I'm going to go ahead and turn off those guides. View guides, clear guides here. We'll uh, turn off that layer and just create a new one to start working with. So this is going to be the base of my pattern swatch here. To create that brick style, I'm going to uh, set up a new uh, guide here. So we'll go view guides, new guide layout. After this one, we are going to go to columns in two rows. And then I'm going to go uh, through that same process with the marquee tool and just draw out a rectangle here. We'll fill it with our foreground color, option delete for Mac, alt backspace for PC. And then I'll just go ahead and deselect those pixels, command or control D here. Now I'm going to set up my basic grid layout. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and convert this to a smart object. So we'll go right click, convert to smart object. It's always a good idea before you uh, duplicate an object here. So let's get to our move tool here, V here. And then I'm going to move this to the corner. I like to use the transform tool. So command or control T, we'll just go zero for X and zero for Y here. That way we have our starting point. And then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer, Commander Control J, and then we'll just drag it until we align to the grids here. And then we'll duplicate that again, Commander Control J, and then we will drag it here to the side. Uh, the, the objects that appear up here need to appear at the bottom as well. So let's go ahead and uh, shift click to select all those layers. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it, Commander Control J, and then we will drag it down to the bottom until we align to uh, our grids here. And then we just need to get the repeats here in the center. So I'm just going to grab uh, two layers here and then I'm going to duplicate them. Command or Control J, bringing them here. Uh, this time it's difficult to see because it's all black, but we have one here and one here. So we have the basic grid. We can't see it yet because they're solid black. So let's go ahead and click in to uh, the smart object here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these guides. We'll go view guides, clear guides here. I'm going to turn off this layer. We'll create a new layer here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on my canvas command or control with the plus key here. And now I'm going to create some lines. So using the line tool, you, under the shapes tools here, you can right click to select the line tool. And then I'm just going to start on this uh, left side and then just hit shift click to draw out a straight line here. Uh, currently, 
uh, we have a fill so let's go ahead and turn off our fill and then let's add a black stroke here and then let's bump up our uh, stroke width let's try uh, 50 pixels to start with here and then uh, this line needs to be positioned at all of the edges so at the top the bottom and the two sides so I'm going to go ahead and hit Command or Control T to get my transform tools and then we'll just bring our Y to zero here. So before we duplicate this layer, we do need to convert it to a smart object. So I'm going to go ahead and right click, convert this to a smart object here. Let's go ahead and duplicate this layer, Command or Control J, and then I'd like to move it to the bottom. So let's go ahead and see how big our canvas size is. So we're going to go to Image, Canvas Size. So uh, just make note of your width is 450 and height is 225. So we'll go ahead and accept that there. And then let's go ahead and move this. So Command or Control T will bring our Y value down to 225 here. And then we'll need to uh, rotate this, duplicate and rotate it. So let's go Command or Control J to duplicate it. And then we'll rotate this object to Command or Control T. We'll go ahead and bring this to 90 degrees here. And then we need to position this over here. So we'll bring our X value to zero. And then let's bring uh, the Y value to a more of a center point. So we'll go 112 for that. We'll go accept that change there. And then we just need to duplicate it one more time. Command or Control J. Command or Control T to transform it. And then we'll bring it over here to 450 pixels. And then we'll accept that change there. So now we have the basis of our brick here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this smart object. So Command or Control S to save it. Command or Control W to close it. And as we can see, we already set up our uh, brick pattern here. So now we can go ahead and save this pattern. So to uh, save a pattern, you're going to go to Edit, Define, Pattern. You can also do that from the Patterns panel here. And if you do not see the Patterns panel, go ahead and click on Window and select Patterns here. Within the Patterns panel, you can click on this plus icon and it will automatically save it. You can give it a name and call it brick here and then just click on OK. And so now we see our newly created swatch. Uh, let's go ahead and test this pattern out. So let's go ahead and close this layer so we can save it here. Command or Control S and then close it. Command or Control W. We have our original one here. So let's go ahead and minimize that. Let's get rid of our guides, view guide, clear guides here. And then from the patterns panel, you can drag your newly created pattern and it will create a pattern fill layer. We will unclip that. So just hovering between the two layers here, option click, and that just creates its own uh, layer here without a clipping mask. So we see our pattern. When you double click on a pattern fill layer, you have the option to, um, you could always scale it down if you want, um, to change the size of it here. And when this dialog box is open, you can always uh, reposition it on the canvas if you want it to be maybe a little bit more off, uh, off skew here. If you want to get back to the original, you can go ahead and click on Snap to Origin. And then we'll just go ahead and click on OK there. Uh, to change the color of your pattern, we can add a solid color adjustment layer. Let's go ahead and make this one white FFF. This will just bring to the bottom of the layers panel for our background color. Um, and, then, and then let's go ahead and duplicate that layer. Command or Control J will bring it to the top. Um, and then you can go ahead and change the color. You can double click on the S icon there and then let's just make this black for the moment zero 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 accepting it there and then let's create a clipping mask so hovering between the layers option click for mac or alt click for pc to create that clipping mask um, to give your pattern its color so now you can easily um, pick a new uh, color scheme if you want um, to change out the colors of your pattern 
Uh, so looking at this pattern, um, maybe we want to make the lines are a little bit too thick. We want to make them a little bit smaller. Let's go ahead and jump back over into this smart object here. And then we need to go um, into our brick and then we need to go in one more to our line. And then here, making sure your line tool is selected, let's go ahead and reduce the stroke uh, width. So let's try uh, 20 pixels this time. And then you can just go ahead and save this smart object, Command or Control S, uh, Command or Control W to close it. We'll do the same thing, save this, Command or Control S, Command or Control W to close it. And then we'll just redefine this pattern here by clicking on our button. And we can just name it Brick 2. We'll click on OK here. We have our newly created pattern. And then we can just exit. Uh, you can leave this open if you want. Um, but let's just jump back over here and try out our new pattern. And now we have our um, brick style, but a little bit thinner um, between the bricks here as well. So setting up the document the way that we did uh, with the smart objects, you can adjust the thickness of your lines pretty easily. If you want them to be thicker or thinner, um, using smart objects is a great way to uh, do that. And then if you just wanted to export this as digital scrapbook paper, just go ahead and click on File, Export, Export As. Under File Settings, um, if you hit the drop down menu, there are three options here. In this case, we'll choose JPEG. And then um, quality for digital scrapbook paper, you want it to be at least a high quality so you can uh, bring it up if you want here. I, I just note that the higher the quality, typically the larger the file size. And then just scrolling down under color space, I like to make sure embed color profile is selected. And then you can just click to export your pattern. Thank you for watching this video on how to create a brick style pattern in Adobe Photoshop. In this video, I focused on how you can use uh, guides and smart objects to help create this pattern. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.